I'm Paul Eakins, uh, Director of the Institute for Sustainable Resources, and of course that includes energy, which is one of our most important resources, and of course it's the one that's normally most associated with climate change, but actually there are abundant other implications of climate change for resources, both in terms of uh, resource impacts from climate change, so impacts on land, on land resources, impacts on water, um, availability of drinking water, the availability of water more generally, um, but also uh, there are resource implications of uh, policies to mitigate climate change because the technologies uh, for low carbon energy use a wide range of resources and especially metals and especially relatively rare metals. I'm very much concerned with what we call the resource nexus and I think it has a lot to do with climate change. You will know that uh, indeed energy is provided by a number of resources but also energy intensive processes for production and consumption they require lots of resources. So there are those interlinkages uh, between using different resources which we call the resource nexus. In my research I'm looking at the energy sector and specifically the flow of resources into the energy sector, so we're talking about land and water, and we're talking about fossil fuel resources, but also looking at what comes out of the energy sector, so the environmental impacts. I'm focusing on air emissions, and I'm talking about global and local impacts. So on the global scale, that could be climate change. On the local scale, we're talking about shorter-term health impacts. I can also give you two reasons why it is interesting, quite relevant actually, for the climate change agenda. And here's the first reason. Uh, resource efficiency. This is potentially big business for manufacturing companies because their share of material cost is by far higher than the energy costs alone. So saving on a number of resources, be it materials, be it water, be it wastewater, be it whatsoever resources, is strategically more important for the companies. And you can also then gain more support from them and also help them to invest in long-term issues such as an energy infrastructure if they have simultaneous efficiency improvements in their running costs. And the second reason is international support. Everybody realizes that the Kyoto Protocol is not really a flying high. There is not so much support uh, outside the European Union and a few other supporters. And the reason probably is that those countries have other priorities. Um, the impacts of climate change on water resources is seen through um, rising temperatures, which means that air is able to hold more water. This has the implications that there will be many short-term uh, extreme weather events increasing um, flood risks. On the other end of the spectrum, um, more short-term short-term um, extreme weather events means that there will be a long time between rainfall in certain regions, thus increasing um, drought risks. Furthermore, evaporation rates and transpiration rates by plants increasing means that there will be less water availability for plants, as well as carbon dioxide levels have biological impacts on uh, increases of water. In my research, I particularly focus on the market failures and inefficiencies in the context of fossil fuels. Such market failures and inefficiencies can take many different forms, but in most cases they can really be traced back to distorted incentives due to certain government policies and regulations. In the context of climate change, such m mismanagement of fossil fuels is particularly relevant when it comes to issues like fiscal policies such as fossil fuel subsidies, which really incentivize overconsumption and cause billions of tons of carbon emissions every year. A projected global population of 9 to 10 billion by 2050, coupled with climate change, continued loss of biodiversity and related ecosystem degradation, um, has essentially led to growing concerns about the sustainable use of land. Large sections of the global population, especially in developing countries, are tied to livelihood from their natural resource base uh, and are extremely vulnerable to the impacts of climate change and rising food and energy scarcity. Two of our major research themes at the Institute for Sustainable Resources are the whole nature of what sustainable resource use means, uh, and we're researching that across a, a range of resource issues, uh, but also the relationship between the economy, the environment and natural resources.